Another of the basic elements of design is shape. Shape is a line connected to enclose an area, or it's an area defined by a clear boundary. It's an area surrounded. Shapes can be geometric, organic. They can be flat and can express length and width. Tom Marioni's performance defines shape by body movement. By standing on the pedestal, the artist suggests the artist himself is the art. Performing the creation of a shape is in itself an act of creating art. Shapes can be organic, meaning free-formed or flowing or suggestive of the natural world. Notice in Jean Moreau's works here, his shapes are flat. They lack shading or lighting details. If space is perceived in this work, it is done by the use of a horizon line and positive and negative spatial effects of contrasting colors. Organic shapes are generally curvilinear as opposed to more rectilinear markings of humans. Shapes can be abstract or non-objective, as you see in this Helen Frankenthaler piece. But even abstract shapes can suggest or imply lifelike beings. Anthropomorphism is shapes that suggest lifelike forms. You see that in this piece by Henry Holmes Smith. He created this by pouring caro syrup onto a plate of glass and then putting that in contact with a piece of film and exposing it to light. Where the caro syrup was blocked some of the light and that created these shapes which he then printed with photo papers. They suggest a figure or some sort of lifelike being. Format, which is the outer edge of the artist's framework, is its first and basic shape. By that I mean in this Edward Weston photograph from 1921, for example, it would be the edge of the frame of his viewfinder or the edges of his negative that define format. Most artists work in rectangles, but there's nothing other than ease and convenience that says that an artist needs to do that. An artist could work in the round, with ovals, with triangles, or any other kind of shape that the artist wants to create. Lines can help define shapes. Shapes can be representational, as you see in this Charles Scheeler painting on the left, which he painted from his photograph, which you see on the right. Notice the high degree of realism in his painted works. In the painting, as well as the photograph, you see a sense of volume. Unlike the flat shapes in Moreau's piece that we looked at earlier, the sense of volume here is created by both receding lines and shapes, as well as the illusion of space created by the lighting and shadowing effects. Shapes can elicit emotion, as you see in these large dark rectangles that dwarf and loom over the pedestrians below, in this famous Paul Strand photograph of Wall Street. Organic shapes are found in nature, as you see in this George O'Keefe painting. Geometric shapes generally represent humans. The use of organic or geometric shapes are generally quick and easy symbolism to represent either nature or people, or the intersection of both. Shapes can create figure-ground relationships. The figure is generally the focal point of the image and the ground, the background. In this Richard Mizrak photograph, 
The Stonehenge rock is the figure, and the rest the ground. The figure is a positive shape, or a positive space. It attracts our attention. It's protruding in importance as well as spatially. It seems to pop forward from the composition. The ground is negative space. It's not unimportant, but seeds in prominence to the figure or positive space. Negative space recedes spatially. Generally in monochromatic images, monochrome meaning one color, like black and white, Light things protrude and dark things recede. Generally, light things are positive space and dark things negative space. But reversing that figure ground or positive negative relationship is this collage by photographer Ray K. Metzger. The dark is the figure, the model that he photographed. The background, white, is the ground. Visually, the black wants to recede, but recognizing its detail, we know that that's not accurate. This image plays with the illusion of space, created by the shapes and their values. I would suggest, too, that new shapes are formed by the intersection of these white shapes between the dark shapes. And so it creates sort of an illusion in space, an optical illusion, if you will. Another example of that is in this Jim Nutt painting. The red shape in the center of this painting, formed by the face and the neck and the arm, but it creates a new shape. And that shape may be subservient to the main focal point, Miss P. Willow here. But indeed, this plays an important shape. And if you extend that interest out to the edges, you'll notice that he creates these almost triangular-like shapes on each edge by using the format, the edge of the frame, and some other defining edge. So again, is playing with positive and negative space. Sometimes this shape protrudes, other times it recedes. This James Terrell piece is a sculptural installation photographed. There are people towards the bottom of this image sitting in chairs. You might barely be able to see them right there. They're sitting in a dimly lit room. The ceiling is illuminated with a red light and has a skylight that glows with the color of the sky outside. Visually, these appear in reverse spatial order. The light sky seeming the most prominent and seems to protrude from the composition. The ceiling is next and the darkly lit room recedes. In reality, from the point of view of this photographer, it's an exact reverse of that. So using shape, value, color, and tone to create space. Connected lines form shapes, and the two work in tandem to define subject matter and space as you can see in this fun kind of pattern piece by Japanese artist Takashi Murakami. Each one of his figures, his flowers and his figures and the other things in here are defined or outlined with line, but connected to other lines, they create shapes. Similarly, this mural by Lauren Asta it's one of my former students and one of our former BA students at Chico State who's been out in the world for more than a decade making a living, making her art. She's really graduated here from her interest in doing tiny little doodles into full-scale, well-planned, well-designed, and executed large-scale public artworks. 
by understanding the elements of design, by utilizing their effects, artists are allowed to communicate their ideas and emotions, in this case, also enlarging her financial opportunities.